The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, and High Stick NT. I'm Sean Brenneman, Agronomic Services Manager with Syngenta Eastern Canada, and we're at the Outdoor Farm Show 2014. And we're in our soybean plot here, and this year we've got a considerable amount of white mold in a little particular area here. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about white mold because it's pretty hard to find any field in Ontario this year that doesn't have some white mold in it. And some fields are definitely much more affected than others, but as a grower, what can you do to really combat this uh, invasive pest and uh, make sure that in the future it doesn't hurt your yield and your quality of your soybeans. So as you can see in here, we've got some sclerotia, you've got that cottony white growth for white mold, and what's going to happen is this sclerotia, these little black fruiting bodies, that's going to be the mold for next year and, and the year after, and these can actually last for up to 10 years in the soil. So depending on what crop you're going back to and uh, some of your management practices on the farm, it's really going to help to determine whether or not these, pests, uh, these fruiting bodies are going to be a problem for future crops. They can last for up to 10 years. They typically germinate only within the top couple of uh, centimeters in the soil. So if this was a field of mine and I was going to go back into soybeans next year because of the rotation or pricing, uh, I would actually want to work this field, work that stubble in. And what that's doing is putting that sclerotia deep in that soil surface so that it's not going to germinate from the top. Any of those sclerotia that are buried down deep in for next year uh, will just stay there. If I was going back into a crop like wheat or corn next year, no-till is a great option in those cases, especially in the high white mold. I would want to no-till the wheat in for sure because you want to leave that sclerotia on top of the soil. Most of those will germinate and will fruit and with the wheat not being a host, they're not going to infect any of the crops. So you're going to get most of that sclerotia gone that year and hopefully the next year's soybeans or two years down the road you'll have less white mold presence. One of the other things you can do as a grower is select the best variety. Definitely all seed companies out there should have good ratings for their varieties, uh, should have a rating to let you know whether or not they're tolerant or not. There's no resistance for soybean uh, white mold, uh, for soybean white mold as far as resistance for varieties because it's a multiple genes that are responsible for white mold tolerance. But uh, you know, at Syngenta we definitely know which products, which varieties will be very good for white mold tolerance and which ones maybe we'd suggest do some other things, you know, make sure you avoid those really uh, lush soils lower the populations in cases where white mold's been very severe, cut your populations back by 15 to 20 percent, and in some cases row width adjustment. Going to a little bit wider row might make, uh, make sense to be able to allow that canopy to dry faster and make sure that there's no white mold that uh, can survive in that uh, area. There are also some fungicides you can try out there as well, and most of those though are, are uh, they have to be applied uh, proactively, so you have to make sure you're out there at flowering, and sometimes you need multiple applications. So in years where there's uh, really bad white mold, like a year like this year, I think a white mold fungicide application would definitely pay. Again, uh, we're at the Outdoor Farm Show 2014, and that's a little bit about how to control white mold.